It's official. Stalker 2 will be an open world game. Quote, the zone in Stalker 2 is one of the biggest seamless open worlds to date. Hello stalkers and welcome to the anomalous dugout. In this video we will discuss what are the implications of Stalker 2 being an open world and what we can expect from such a big change. Let's get into it. First of all, the fact that Stalker 2 will be an open world game might have come as a surprise to some, but actually this feature has been requested by many people among the community, and it makes sense from a technical point of view, as it is much more common nowadays to have a lot of open world games like that. However, this was not the case back in 2007, and so we have our first confirmed major difference between the old Stalker games and the new upcoming one. Of course, the three already released Stalker games are not open world, and players seem to have mixed feelings about this change. Some believe maps and transition points restrain the freedom of exploration and break the realism and immersion, which are very important elements of any Stalker game. But others, like this system, as it creates a coherent structure between the levels and is undeniably beneficial to computer performance. So it appears that an important source of concerns about open world games is performance issues. How can we possibly run a game that has very detailed graphics as well as a huge map that needs to load? Well, for that, we'll have to trust the developers and their technology. But it is safe to assume that Stalker 2 will require a powerful computer to run. Apart from technical considerations, the impact on the lore could be big as well. Indeed, in the Stalker trilogy it is made clear that there are areas in the zone that are inaccessible because of anomalies, radiations, and other dangers, and that stalkers have to travel between different areas using safe routes. This explanation makes the levels and transition system coherent with the lore and puts on a touch of realism over it, which is much better than just saying that the technical capabilities at the time were too limited to have one big map. So, the fact that Stalker 2 will be an open world could mean that this part of the lore will be altered or abandoned, or that the zone changed. However, I prefer to think that the developers will find a way to make the map open but restrained at the same time, by creating the very anomalies and hazards that are supposed to shape the landscape of the zone. It would be awesome to see this with our own eyes, to understand why stalkers are forced to take certain routes and why guides are so important. Also, the dangerous areas, anomalous fields and safe routes could actually change place after each emission like it's supposed to be, bringing a whole new replayability dimension to an already unpredictable gameplay. Another point that we need to bring up is the similarities this game map will have to the old ones. From the trailer, we can assume that good old areas such as the Rookie Village will come back and that we also will get brand new areas such as the Duga Radar. By the way, some people think that the Brain Scorcher Radar or the Lemansk Antennas are the same thing as the Duga radar, but no, it's not. They are completely different things. So, how similar will the new zone be compared to the previous games? Well, no one knows, but what I hope is that all the old locations return almost exactly the same, because all the players have grown attached to these places, 
but mostly because it would not make sense for the zone to have completely changed or else the continuity and coherence between the games would be broken. What we are sure of, however, is the fact that this uh, new zone will be huge and because of that brand new locations will appear and maybe cut maps too? That would be so epic. Anyway, the exact quote from GSC states that the new map will be one of the biggest open worlds to date. So how big is that? Well, if we put aside games with automatically generated maps and games with only vehicles, the biggest maps come from games such as GTA 5, The Witcher 3 or Arma 3 which is between 100 and 300 square kilometers. For comparison, the real 30 kilometer exclusion zone around the Chernobyl power plant is 2600 square kilometers. Yet we don't know for sure if the zone from Stalker, which is the anomalous zone, is the same size as the real life radioactive zone. I think it's probably not the same, but who knows. But a frequent problem with very large maps is that there is usually a lot of useless empty space. Original Stalker games were not like that. Every area had its purpose and diverse gameplay possibilities. And all locations were filled with interesting things to do and see as well as a lot of details. Each map had its own feeling and atmosphere. So let's hope GSC doesn't fall into the trap of making a huge map but with repetitive and uninteresting areas. Finally, there is always the question of vehicles into the zone. In case you didn't know, vehicles such as cars were supposed to appear in the very first Stoker game, but all of this was removed from the final product. Still, many motorized vehicles appear in the games in the form of props, as well as military BTRs and helis. Also, one ending slide from Call of Pripyat mentions that Nitro and Cardan are working on a special vehicle adapted to the conditions of the zone. So it is not impossible to see vehicles making a return in Stalker 2, especially if the map is huge, despite the fact that the zone is an extremely dangerous place to maneuver. To conclude, I would say that there is a lot to expect from an open world Stalker 2. Brand new locations, hopefully the good old ones as well, vehicles maybe, yet the devs need to be careful to make the new map respectful of the original games and the lore, while also keeping all areas interesting and making sure optimization and performance is fine. GSC has a lot of work to do, so here's my advice to you stalkers, be patient and believe in Stalker 2.